Okay, so um, a couple of things about toxins. There's uh, certain things that they use in toxicology. Up the front away, please. Which, uh, as you might imagine, is the science of, uh, of toxins. Uh, very complex science that, that deals with a lot of things. Uh, one of them is establishing the strength of a toxin. And the typical way in which to do that is to give it what they call an LD50 rating. And the LD stands for lethal dose and the 50 stands for 50%. And that's when they take all the, uh, the bunnies and the little cute little mice and stuff and they inject them with uh, or expose them to different levels of toxins. And they do it gradually. And then when they hit a uh, level at which 50% of the organisms die in that uh, test group, then they call that, that's called the LD50. And it's usually a value that is, that is in a mass of toxin per mass of the whatever was being tested on, whatever organism was being tested on. So, so many milligrams, it takes so many milligrams of mercury uh, per kilogram of, of mouse or rabbit or something to, to do the, to, to kill half of them, okay? The reason why they do um, the 50% line there is to account for differences in tolerance, okay? So you wouldn't necessarily want to um, establish a toxicity level when one of those organisms dies, as soon as one of them dies, because that organism might be particularly sensitive. It might have a disease or something that makes it that way, okay? So that makes it kind of impractical as, as, a, as a guidelines. And then obviously also you wouldn't want to wait till all of the organisms were, were dead because then that would mean that you're setting toxicity levels that are, that are very high and uh, those dosage of course is going to kill everything there. So they split it in half and, and right down the middle 50% gives you a guidelines and it, like I said it's just a way to, um, to, to rate different toxins. It doesn't mean that they're going to say okay you can put this much uh, 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 dioxin into the water uh, because you're only going to kill half of the fish that are in there, so it's okay. They don't, they don't use it that way. They just use it, they say, okay, here's the dioxin. It has a LD50 of blank, and in this case, what would be, what would be a more strong toxin? One with a lower value or a higher value? Lower. That's exactly right, lower value, because it means it takes less of that toxin to kill uh, the test organisms. So uh, they're going to say, okay, dioxin has an LD50 of, of 0.5 or whatever, um, milligrams per kilogram, therefore we need to be very careful with it, it's very, very toxic and we need to establish very low levels that, that are allowable to put into there. But they do, it's, it's allowable to put certain toxins out in the environment, it's just inescapable, it's impractical to think that you're going to be able to do certain things without emitting some type of toxins and there are natural toxins that are out there as well, that's part of the case that's being made. Um, a popular uh, story that people like to that like to say or to, to gross people out is they'll say you know your peanut butter and they always got to pick on peanut butter but your peanut butter has uh, you know a, a 0.5 milligrams of rat turds in it um, <laughs> but that's not necessarily true but the FDA guidelines might say it's just an example I don't know for sure but might say that that's allowable that you can have that much because you're you know whenever you make food there's always gonna be rodents and stuff in those areas so there's an allowable amount of rat feces in your, your food and allowable amount of, of roach eggs and all those other kind of things. Yep. So there you go. You're killing us So that's the LD50, okay? Um, certain designations for toxins, uh, if they are ones that are able to kill you right off the bat, that would be an acute toxin. Uh, carbon monoxide, for example, is an acute toxin. Whereas if you had like particulates and stuff in the atmosphere, those things have health effects over a long period of time. We call those chronic toxins, okay, because they're long-term exposure. What you think is, is worse, not from a health perspective, but from a, a toxin management perspective? Acute, I guess. Well, no, why not? Why or why not? Why, do you disagree with that? Why do you think the chronic is easier to, to deal with or manage? Uh, Hmm? No, well, I mean, from a strictly which one do you not want to be exposed to, the cute one is going to kill you right off the bat. 
But we tend to have more problems with chronic toxins because they go undetected. And we're not no we don't know their their effects and everything until it's too late. So you end up dying anyway. So uh, well yeah, I mean that's that's always the case. But um, the fact of the matter is is that that a lot of these things uh, we don't know about or we don't know how much it will take or if they're even present in the environment until we start to see medical conditions and then we somebody says, Well, why are all these people getting these particular medical conditions? And they start to look at water supply and air quality and all those other kind of things and find out that there's these substances that do that. So, of course, if you had to swallow a cup of it, you would much rather want to swallow a cup of chronic toxin over Q toxin, but chronic toxins tend to actually offer more challenges uh, to people in the environmental field, environmental maintenance field, and things like that. Okay. Um, different types of toxins based upon what they cause or what they do to people. We've talked about carcinogens as cancer causing uh, chemicals I think before. Uh, mutations, mutagens, and uh, birth defects caused by teratogens. Bless you. Now, a lot of people will tend to think, well, birth defects are mutations. That's not necessarily true. Mutations are changes in the in genetics. Okay, So, those mutations can be passed on. They can also happen within an organism. They don't have to be passed on to be a mutation. When, you're, uh, when you get cancer, a lot of times that's because of mutations in your genes that have taken place maybe naturally or because of influence of poisons. Just a second. Um, with birth defects, um, specifically when we talk about them being caused by teratogens, it's because these chemicals uh, affected the baby in the womb when it was developing, and, of course, that's a very... Um, sensitive part of a person's development. There's millions of different things, changes, etc. that are going on and small changes that would not necessarily affect the adults uh, will have those effects on, on children, yeah, on babies. Like alcohol children. is a teratogen, right? It is, absolutely. Alcohol is a teratogen. Many different things will cause uh, damage to the fetus and therefore are called teratogens. Okay, what? good example. Hmm? Yeah, I mean the 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 chemical that the the virus itself produces that causes the damage. Yeah, that's going to be what's called the teratogen. Typically, there are chemicals that you refer. Oh, that's such a sad disease. Any questions about different toxins or how they measure them or things like that? All right.